As long as I, don't, I say no to that chip, I'll be okay. I'll go to heaven. Or I'll be saved. Amen? That's what a lot of people believe. What if the mark's not a chip? What if they don't actually do a chip? That's where I was going with it, brother. And actually, it's symbolic. The Bible talks about that God's people will also be marked on their foreheads. Did you know that? We talk about the mark of the beast. We talk about the, the mark of the beast on, the, on our foreheads or on our right hand. But did you know God talks about his seal too? He says that he seals his people before the, the second coming of, of the Lord. So it's not just the mark of the beast, but it's also the seal of God. Amen? If I wanted to deceive you, or if you wanted to deceive somebody, how would you deceive somebody? Are you just going to come out in plain truth and come out and say, I'm going to deceive you? Are you ready to be deceived? The majority of the people, 99% of the people are saying no, you know? Right? But if you wanted to deceive somebody, you're going to find out what that person likes. If your favorite meal is enchiladas, I'm going to invite you over to dinner, and I'm going to put poison in those enchiladas, and you're going to eat them. That's how the devil deceives people. The devil is not going to come out in plain sight and say, okay, this is the mark of the beast. You either receive it or you reject it. No. The devil is going to come Christ-like. The devil is going to use Christianity, popular Christianity, to push the mark of the beast in these last days. It's not going to be plain black and white. He's not going to deceive us that way. He has different tricks up his sleeve. And one of those ways is that he uses religious leaders. He uses popular Christianity in the last days to push his agenda. For us to break God's law. But I just wanted to make that announcement. Um, we usually have children's story. But we don't have no children here today. But we're all children, right? The Bible says that if we want to enter into the kingdom of heaven, then we must be as children. That means we must be dependent on God the Father. And that's how we are children. So I'm going to go ahead and jump straight into the, the message today in the sermon. Thank you for all those that came out today. And uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for... Uh, um, for being here for with us, Lord, and uh, we want to dedicate all this service to you, Lord, and that it might be to glorify you and not self. We invite your Holy Spirit, Lord, be with us and speak through me, Lord. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, the message today is called Divine Moments. I was uh, sitting at home and I was like, what do, I, what, what do I need to share this coming Saturday? What do I need to share with your people, Lord? And uh, it's important for us, Pastor, right? It's important for us to ask God, what does he want us to share with God's people? Amen? Because I could sit here, I could stand up here and share what I think, but I want to share what God thinks. Amen? I want him to be the one that speaks through me. I want him to share what he has for you and for me. Because when I preach up here, it's not just for you guys. It's for me my, for myself as well. I need to learn as well, amen? Just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean that I know everything. Because I don't. We all are in the learning process. We learn every day. The more you dive into God's word, the more the Lord will bless you. And will reveal things to you that you never knew about. That's why the book of Revelation is called the book of Revelation. God will reveal himself to you if you simply ask. If you simply go to him, he will reveal to you 
what he has for you and what plans he has for you. Amen. He will reveal to you that he loves you very much. He will reveal to you that he died for you and cares about you. Even though nobody around you might care about you. Maybe people around you have forgotten about you. And don't want nothing to do with you. But you know what? God says, I'm right here for you. I love you regardless. I know you've messed up. I know you've gone in the wrong path and you've done your things, but I love you. I love you and I want you to come back to me. Amen? So God loves you very much regardless of whatever you have done and what path you have taken. Amen? The Bible is awesome. The Bible reveals so many things to us. It's beautiful. Amen? So what is sin? What is sin? I could... I could stand here and tell you what sin is, amen? But I don't want to do that. I want the Bible to tell us what sin is, amen? So again, the sermon title is called Divine Moments. So what is sin? Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and this is in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. And it says, Do you not know that the unrighteous would not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adul adul adulterers and adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible calls that sin. Amen? How many of us fit in that picture? All of us. We cannot exclude ourselves from that. We all fit in that picture. We're all destined to, to go to hell. Amen? We cannot say, I am better than you, or I, you are better than me, because I know the Bible more than you. No, we all fall in this category. We all have all fallen in this category, right? So we are all sinners. That includes all of us. Amen? So that's what the Bible calls sin. All those things are sinful. All those things separate us from love, from the love of God. Not from the love of God, but separate us from God. Because God still loves us regardless. Amen? But all those things separate us from God. But we do it to our own selves. It's not God that separates itself from us. Because God is pure. God is righteousness. You cannot mix righteousness with unrighteousness. You cannot have the light and the darkness at the same time. When you turn the light on, the darkness is gone, right? The brighter the light, the more the darkness is gone. So God is the light that we must follow, amen? We need God in our life. But in order for us to get to that light, we have to admit that we're sinners. Amen? Amen. You have to admit, I'm a sinner. I have to admit I'm a sinner. And Lord, take this mess from me. Take it away from me. I don't want it. Amen? And He will. He will. It's simply, if it comes from your heart, He will remove it from you. That's the thing that today in Christianity, a lot of people want to be a Christian, but they want to continue to do what they've always done in their life. Amen? And yes, it might seem that some people are worse than others, but that's for God to determine. Amen? Amen. You know, that's for God to determine. Maybe you're, you, were never a, you, you were never a person that cheated. You were never a person that killed anybody or anything like that. You were never in gangs or all that. But maybe all your life you were a liar. Sin is sin. Amen? Amen. Sin is sin and it will remove us. It will separate us, I'm sorry, from God. Amen? So we come to God and ask Him to remove any sinful things in our lives. And this is a daily walk with Him. This is a daily walk. We have to ask God every day, Lord, what is... What is separating me from you? Me from you, Lord. And God will tell you. God will show you. God will show you and all you have to say, Okay, Lord, 
I repent from that. Please remove that from me and help me to walk in your ways. Amen? Amen. But you may say, I have a relationship with God and I am surrendering all to Him. He's molding me. He's renewing me, which may be true. Amen? And I pray that that is your walk with the Lord. And I pray that's what's going on in your life. That you're asking God to, to mold you. To, to, uh, that you're surrendering all to Him. Amen? And that you're asking Him to renew you daily. Amen? Mm -hmm. One day at a time. Un día a la vez. Right? Yeah. Amen. So let's go to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. That's towards the end of the Bible. Before Revelation. The book of 1 John. Verse, I mean, chapter 1, verse 9, and it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen, right? I'm glad that Bible verse is right there. Because we all need cleaning, right? We all need to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Yes, if we confess our sins and we repent, He cleanses us up. He cleanses us all up. And that is a beautiful promise from God. Satan may not convince you to fall in most of these areas because your walk with God is strong. But guess what He, he will do? He will try a different method. You might say to yourself, I've been following the Lord. I know the Lord is working with me in my life. Amen? I know God is, is with me. And I know I'm in a relationship with God. Amen? And, I, you know, as, a, as Christians, God gives us the gift of discernment. Right? The Bible says that you will know people by their fruits, by their actions. Right? So, as a pastor, I can see the changes in people. I can see that the, the Lord is using people and, and the people are changing. Amen? And you might be able to see the same thing with other people. Amen? So if your walk with the Lord is strong, amen. More praise. Amen? But guess what? The devil doesn't stop. Guess what? He will use a different method. You will see it. He will use a different method to attack you. And we're going to study about that. Because we always want to know, for those that have ever been in the military, what they do is, before they ever go to war, before they ever go to, to, to go out in the war zone, they practice and study what the enemy does. Right? What is their, what is their uh, weapons that they might use? Where do they hang out? What are they going to use to attack you? Right? So they study everything before they go and fight in the battle. So for us, I'm not saying that we need to concentrate on the devil. But we need to understand what are the different methods that the devil will try to use against us. Therefore, we will be ready. We will be ready when the devil attacks us. Amen? All right. Have you ever heard that sometimes too much of something good is bad for us? Sometimes, and I'll go, I'll go straight to the Bible verse and then I'll explain. Have you ever heard that sometimes too much of something good is bad for us? Let's go to Luke chapter 10, 38 through 42. Thirty-eight through forty-two, Ver, uh, chapter ten, thirty-eight through forty-two. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house, and then she said to his sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving and approached him and said, Lord, 
Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore tell her to help me. And then verse 41, And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Was Martha doing wrong? No. Martha was getting dinner ready and serving the table and yeah. getting everything ready, right? While Mary was over there sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to Jesus talk, right? Martha wasn't doing anything wrong, but yet, do we, do we see here what's going on? Did you know that the devil will even use the good things in our lives to distract us? There is many distractions in life. Amen? So this is the story of two sisters, Mary and Martha. And uh, they invited Jesus to their house. Amen? And Martha meant well. You know, a lot of us, we want to treat our guests, right? We want to help them out. We want to cook a good meal. We want to just spend time with them, right? So we get busy. We get caught up. But Mary wanted to know more about Jesus. Amen? What does saying distract you with today? What does saying distract me with today? When we go out on dates with our spouse, and I'm guilty of this, when we go out on a date with our spouse, sometimes I'm, in my, I'm on my phone. Right? And it's supposed, it's supposed to be a special moment. Amen? It's supposed to be quality time with my spouse. Right? And yet, I catch myself on the phone most of the time. Am I spending quality time with my spouse? I'm not. I'm being distracted by a cell phone. Is there anything wrong with that cell phone? No. If it's used for the right reasons, right? Maybe we're distracted by watching a sport on TV. Even at a, at a restaurant. Because they put TVs now at a restaurant, right? And you supposedly go, you're supposed to have to have, you're supposedly having family time and you go to the restaurant to watch, I mean to uh, spend time together and talk with each other. But yeah, you're caught on watching that, that football game on the TV. The whole time you're just watching that football game, and you don't care what's going on around you. Are we spending quality time with our family? Or are we being distracted by that game? Also, partners when dating. You know, uh, I don't know who I'm speaking to here today. But we need quality time with each other. Amen? It's good to have our kids with us. But there's also comes a time when it's just us without the kids. So our relationship will strengthen, amen? We need quality time with each other. So our relationship will strengthen with no distractions. And sometimes the devil will even use your kids as a distraction. Have a special date night. Have a special date night and leave the kids with somebody else. So you and your partner can build, bond y'all's relationship even stronger. Amen? We need that quality time. And I know we need to have more date times, <laughs> more date nights. Amen? What is distracting you from that relationship with your partner, with your spouse? Amen? Nothing wrong with having friends and kids with you. You know, there's nothing wrong with... Okay, let's all go out to eat. Let's all, you know, get together, bring the kids, and let's have a great time. There's nothing wrong with that. That's needed as well. But when you want to build your relationship with your spouse even stronger, you need to have more one-on-one -on -one dates. Just one-on-one -on -one dates. Because that will build your relationship. That will strengthen your relationship. And don't be distracted by what's on the, on the screen at the restaurant. Or at your house. Amen? Build that bond with each other. Talk to each other. 
look at each other eye to eye and just tell each other how your day went and how to share with each other and strengthen that relationship. It's the same thing with God, people. It's the same thing with God. We want our relationship to be strengthened with God. Amen? But when we allow these distractions, we are, we are not paying attention to what God is trying to tell us. Amen? That's what was going on with Martha. Martha was being distracted by doing good things. And we can be distracted by doing good things as well. Because the devil knows he can't distract us into going and getting drunk. He knows he can't distract us by, or get us to sin by going in, uh, to the club or doing drugs or whatever, right? Because your walk with the Lord is strong. So that now the devil has to come up with a different method. And that is distraction. That is distraction with even good things. Amen? We have to put a balance to things in life. There's many distractions. Facebook. I remember one time I was off of work and I got on Facebook. And I put it down. Oh, maybe I need to go check Facebook again. Got it up. Got into the phone. Before I knew it, I was on, uh, I think I was on Facebook, like, almost all day. And I even told myself, like, what did you do? What did you do with this whole day, right? I was on Facebook. I spent my whole day off on Facebook. I'm like, that's terrible. Right? There's many distractions. I could have been studying the Word of God. Amen? I could have been uh, praying for people. I could have been reading what the Bible has. Amen? But well, instead, I was distracted. Instagram, sports, nothing wrong with watching a football game. But if you're watching game after game after game, you're, 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 uh, you're waste, wasting God's time. Because time, God has given us time. What are we doing with His time? We could be reaching out to somebody, right? We could be calling somebody, hey, are you okay? Is there anything I can help you out with? Or let me pray with you. Amen? What are we doing with God's time? Are we being distracted with uh, shopping, TV, hobbies? My hobby is I like old cars. But are we allowing our hobbies to take more of our time than with God? Amen? So there's a lot of distractions that the devil will use. And none of these None of these things are bad. They're not sinful. It's just the devil is using those things against us. That's why I said earlier, sometimes too much of something good is also bad for us. Amen? We need to have our minds always thinking about God. Everywhere we go, at home, if we're watching a football game, I'm still thinking about God. If we're uh, out on a date, I'm still thinking about God. I look for every opportunity for me to share the gospel with somebody. Amen? And we are always to see the goodness in somebody. You know, we're quick to judge people, right? And we forget where we came from sometimes. We're quick to judge people and say, well, man, they're a terrible person. But maybe you were put there in their place. In, 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 their, in, their, in their path for you to speak to them and give them hope, right? We were at the restaurant yesterday and, you know, yeah, I, I, I was wrong because the waitress was in a bad mood and I, was, I told my wife, I go, I don't know what's wrong with her and she's, you know, she's in a bad mood and maybe I was kind of judgmental but maybe we should have smiled at her Maybe she would have saw God in us, the Holy Spirit in us, right? So we need to try to approach everybody and try to reach out to people. Take that, take that, uh, that chance to share the gospel with somebody, amen? Because God has a calling for you, has a calling for you. Has a calling for me, for us to reach out to the lost, amen? God has us there. Sometimes, one time I was in a hurry to church, 
this is before I was a, a pastor. One time I was, I was in a hurry at church and I forgot my Bible. I, I hate to leave anywhere without my Bible. I feel like I need my Bible anywhere I go. And I took, uh, we got to church and I was like, man, I, uh, I feel weird without my Bible. <laughs> and so I got on my phone and I said, I'll just use the Bible app, which I'm not saying don't use that. I'm just saying what happened to me, right? We were in church, and then the, the preacher started preaching. The pastor started preaching, and I was using my phone on my, as my Bible app. But guess what? I got distracted, and I started uh, going to Facebook or text, texting, checking my emails, and I was going back and forth. I didn't even pay half attention to what the pastor was saying that day. You know, so the devil will always try to find his way. The, the Bible says that if you give, well, if you give the devil, if you if you crack open the door for the devil, he will push himself through. Right. So we don't need to allow any distractions to distract us. Right. Sometimes we just need to relax and stop trying to fix everything. Are you that kind of person? I know I am. I'm always trying to make sure everything's perfect. I'm always trying to make sure everything's right. I'm always trying to fix everything. But we need to relax sometimes. We need to just relax and allow God to move through us. Amen? We need to allow God to do His work in us. And stop trying to do everything on your own and trying to fix everyone. We're trying to fix everyone and everything, right? And that's what Martha was doing. Martha went to Jesus and said, Do you not care that she's just sitting there listening to you? But she's not helping me here in the kitchen? Right? And Jesus said to her, Jesus said to Martha, 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 you're always worried about everything. You're always troubled. You're always concerned about everything. Mary has chosen the best spot. She's sitting here and listening to what I have to tell her. And you should do the same. Sometimes we need to relax. Right? Sometimes we need to relax. Do we honestly keep the Sabbath, friends? Do we honestly keep the Sabbath? You might say, yes, I keep the Sabbath. I go to church on Saturday. But what is the Sabbath? It says, relax. Right? rest but do we honestly as, as Sabbath keepers do we actually keep the Sabbath when we get out of here do we do we go out to eat at the restaurants or do we go home and turn the TV on and we're just on the go on the go on the go are we keeping the Sabbath are we relaxing you know the devil has wants us to go and go and go and go because when we're always on the go, on the go, we don't stop and think about God. The Bible says, be still and know that I am the Lord your God. Amen? What does it mean, be still? It doesn't mean stop walking. If it takes that, go ahead, right? <laughs> but it's saying, stop what you're doing. And acknowledge, I'm right here. Come listen to what I have for you. How do we go to Him? Through the Bible. You say, well, I keep the Sabbath. Can you actually teach somebody from the Bible what the Sabbath is all about? How long have you been keeping the Sabbath? Many years, right? Many, many years for most of us here. But can you honestly give a Bible study and teach somebody else how to keep the Sabbath from the Bible? <coughs> well, you might say, well, I don't know how to read my Bible very well. Everything takes practice. Just study it. Start somewhere. <laughs> Start somewhere. You have all Sabbath to do that. You shouldn't have. You can't go buy nothing. You can't go to the restaurant or you can't go out to eat. You can't go to the movies or anything, right? You have all day to get into the Bible. I say, okay, I believe in the Sabbath. Let me see why I believe in the Sabbath. Let me go to the Word of God. 
and you don't know where to start, all you have to do is Google. We have this amazing thing called Google, right? Google every Bible verse that has to do with the Sabbath, and it'll tell you where to go in the Bible. Don't let Google tell you what the Sabbath is, but let it tell you where to go in the Bible. And then you will study it, and then you will learn some things, right? The Bible is amazing. The Bible speaks to us. We all need God's Word. We need to come in the presence of the Lord. We need to slow down in life, right? And stop allowing so many things to distract us. And studying the Word, not just that, but praying for people. Going and being there for somebody. And on the Sabbath or any day, you know somebody is in the, in the hospital? Go and visit them. Pray with them. You know somebody that's in prison or jail? Go visit them. Amen? But this is, this is the formula. This next Bible verse is the formula that God has given us. On how to take care of all these things. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. book of uh, Matthew chapter 6 33 is the first book of the New Testament Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 this Bible verse all Christians should know and should practice Matthew chapter 6 33 says but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you, or added to you. What does it say? Seek first the kingdom of God. We go through things, right? We all need things. We all need clothing. We all need food. We all need a. We all look for a, a godly spouse, a Christian husband or wife, right? We all want our kids to, to follow the ways of the Lord. Amen? This is the formula, guys. When you put God first, everything else will fall into place. Let me repeat that again. When you put God first, everything else will fall into place. Did you know that your kids copy what you do? Your kids copy what you do. If you, you go to church and then you go home and you do opposite of what God expects us to do, the kids see that. Right? We are to put God first everywhere we're at. Wherever you find yourself at, put God first. Amen? Before you answer to your flesh, because what does the Bible say? That your flesh automatically wants what's bad. Your flesh automatically wants to listen to that song that you shouldn't be listening to, right? Well, Lord, I mean, the beat sounds good. I'm just listening to it because it sounds good. I'm not paying attention to the words. Yeah, right. Right? The flesh wants what's bad automatically. That's why the Bible says, kill the flesh daily. Kill the flesh daily. Okay, Lord, even though I want to hear this song... I'm not going to listen to it. Even though I want to watch this movie, I'm not going to watch it. Because I want to kill the flesh and I want to follow your spirit. Amen? Even though I want to get back at so-and-so, I'm not going to. I'm going to allow you to work through me. And what do you want me to do, Lord? Amen? Do we have respect for God in these last days? Do we tell God what to do? A lot of people do. I've even heard it in prayer. God, I need you to do this. God, I need you to do that. We don't tell God what to do. We ask God. Amen? We come in reverence. We come in humbleness. He is our master, right? He is our creator. So why would we tell God what to do? We ask God what to do. Or we ask God to help us in whatever we're facing. Amen? So... We put God first. Put God first in your family, in your job, whatever it is. Even though you're being attacked, God will use you. God will use you. 
And that person will eventually come to, to, to know who God is. Amen? The sermon is called Divine Moments. Are we missing out on divine moments? Like I said yesterday, and I, I didn't do that. Yesterday we were at that restaurant. And I stopped, and I was thinking about it last night. As I was going to bed. I was like, I should have smiled at that waitress to let her know that God loves her. You know what I mean? And I didn't do that. Instead, I was talking about her. Like, oh, she was such a bad waitress. We miss out on divine moments. We miss out on opportunities to share the gospel with people. And we don't even know it. Right? We need to be there for people. We need to help people out. And even if they don't accept God, even if they don't, if they make fun of you, or even if they mistreat you, at least, at least you did your part, right? At least you did your part. And the Bible says that God will reward you. That's why it says, look first to the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen? Or we're missing the opportunity of a blessing from God. Because we're not putting Him first. We are to put God first in everything. College degrees. Your work. Making money. All these things are necessary, right? I mean, we all need to make money, right? To support our families. Um, we want to encourage people to go to college to get a good degree so they can have a better job. Right? Right? All these things are necessary, but even some of these things sometimes can be a distraction. My wife uh, told me one time because I was I was stressing big time. I was taking these classes and I was studying late at night for for these college exams and stuff. And um, my wife was like, "Maybe you just need to stop. You need to stop. Don't do no homework tonight, and just study the Bible and pray." No, but I got. I have to study. I have to study this because if not, I'm, I might not pass this next test, and I'm not gonna know. Maybe you just need to take a little break and get into God's Word and pray. I was frustrated. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was in tears, and, my, and I did that. I stopped. I said, "Okay, I'm gonna put God first. and everything turned out fine. Sometimes we need to just relax and allow God to come into our lives and use us. Amen? We need to allow God, um, you know, we are to be hard workers. The Bible says that a lazy person, you know, it's not good for a person to be lazy, right? But it also says don't overwork. Did you know that the Bible says that in the book of Proverbs? Do not overwork to make yourself rich. Because riches will grow wings and fly away. That's what the book of Proverbs says. If you don't believe me, look it up. Proverbs 3, It says don't overwork. A lot of people are workaholics. That's a distraction too. They're working and working and working. And they're missing out on a blessing from the Lord. Amen. They work on the weekend. They don't have time to go to church. Overworking is also a distraction. There has to be a balance in everything. It doesn't mean be lazy, but it also says don't overwork. It doesn't mean don't go to college, but also don't forget about God while you're taking these degrees. Amen? Or going for these degrees. You know, uh, and once we do get those degrees, we are still to remain humble Christians. Amen? We are to always be humble. That is one of the greatest keys in being a servant for God. When you want to share the gospel with somebody, they're only going to take you serious when you're humble. You can tell them and demand them all you want, but when they don't see that you have a humble attitude, when they don't see Jesus Christ in your heart, they're just going to say, you're just like all the other Christians I know. Right? We need to have that humble attitude. So pause once in a while and ask yourself, God, am I ignoring you? Am I too busy that I don't spend quality time with you? That's why the Bible compares a marriage to us with Him. God always compares 
himself to us as a marriage, as a married couple. Married couples need to spend quality time together by themselves every, every once in a while. By themselves to build up the relationship. The same thing with us and God. We need to spend more time one-on-one -on -one with God to build our relationship with Him. Amen? We need to be careful on these distractions. So that's how relationships suffer today. They don't make time for each other. Amen. We want God to save us. Many of us want God to save us, but we don't want to make Him Lord. Amen. What does that mean? You know, the Bible says that uh, He made man first and wife second. Therefore, the Lord is uh, over the woman. I'm sorry, that's what the Bible says. So a woman is supposed to um, humble herself before the husband, right? The husband has the ultimate say-so. She can recommend things. Let's go to her husband and say, hey, uh, maybe you should try this or you should try that. And the husband will say, well, let me think about it. He might take her advice and he might say, well, thank you for your input, but I'm still going to do it this way. Because he has the ultimate say-so. The same thing with God. It says that we are, we are under God. All of us are under God, right? And therefore, we ask God. We pray to God. But He has the ultimate say-so, right? He has the ultimate say-so. He might say, okay, I'll give you what you're asking he might say, no, I'm not going to give you what you're asking me for because I have a better way for you. Amen? But God wants us to come to him in reverence and in respect. Lord means sir. Did you know that? The word Lord means sir. That's why back in those uh, medieval times, people would go before the king and say, Lord, you know, my Lord. That means sir. It's out of respect. Like you're in charge. King. You're my king. You're in charge. But that's why Jesus says, I am Lord of lords. I am sir of sirs. I'm above any authoritative figure. Right? As much as I disagree with Donald Trump, I still have to respect him. Because he's my president. I might not agree with everything he says, but I still have to respect what he says. Is there that kind of respect here today? I mean, I see it all over the place that people are so disrespectful to the president. The same thing, are you disrespectful to your spouse? Are you disrespectful to your parents? Are we disrespectful to God? Because he's not just Lord, but he is Lord of Lords. Amen? And that's what it means. A lot of us, we want God to save us, but we don't want to make Him Lord of our life. We want Him to be our Savior, but not our Lord. Amen? We don't want to submit ourselves to the Lord. We don't want to say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Instead, we're going to God and say, this is what we're going to do. This is what I'm going to do. We don't go to God and tell Him what we're going to do. We are to ask God, I want you to be my... Lord, please be my Savior, but I also want you to be Lord of my life. Amen? If you say that simple prayer, if you go to God, if you go to Jesus Christ and you say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Man, if you only say that simple prayer, He's going to be like, okay, I have this for you to do. I have this for you to do. I need you to call so-and-so and forgive them. I need you to go get Bible study. I need you to pray with so-and-so. I need you to stop looking down at this person. I need you to do all these things. The Lord has so many things for us, but we don't ask Him. We don't ask Him. Instead, we try it our own way, right? We try to do it in our own way, and we're, we're going to fail every time. Yeah, you might have a bunch of people coming to you, but they're not following God. They're following you. We want to lead people to Christ, not to ourselves. God is amazing. 
And the Lord is ready. Did you know that the Lord is ready to bless you? The Lord is ready to bless you, but did you know that you could be brought in that blessing by the way you treat other people? Or by you not being obedient to the Lord? Did you know that we can block those blessings? That's why he says here in Matthew, look first to the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. God wants to, God wants to bless you, just like you want to bless your own children. God is amazing. We're almost done here. The more we spend time with God, the more we spend time with Jesus, the more we prioritize what's more important there's some things that we may have to let go of, right? There's some things that we're going to have to let go of. Because God is not just telling you what you need to do, but God is also asking you to let go of certain things in your life. And we might not want to. I was just sharing with uh, Carlos this morning how I got conviction a couple of years ago how I needed to let go of a lot of secular music. Because it was, it was not blessing me, and it wasn't surely blessing other people either. I had to let go of that music. Because it was causing destruction in my life, but it was also causing destruction in other people's lives. God might be asking you to let go of something here today that is sinful, right? I don't know what it is. We have to be obedient to the Lord. And the Lord says, okay, let, let go of this, let go of that. I'm going to bless you with this, right? How many of y'all seen that picture on Facebook where the little girl has a, a little bear behind her? No, she's bringing a little little bear, a toy bear to, to Jesus. And Jesus is saying, give that to me. And Jesus has like a bigger, a bigger teddy bear behind him. <coughs> And the little girl's like, I don't know if I can give you this. You know, this is all I have. And Jesus was like, I have something better for you. If you only surrender that to me. She surrendered that little toy bear. And Jesus turns around and gives her a big old giant bear. Toy bear. Or stuffed animal, right? The Lord is ready to bless you. But we have to let go of certain things in our life. We have to be obedient. What is distracting you from God today? Just ask yourself each day, what is distracting me? What, what, Lord, what is distracting me from following you all the way? And God will show you. Simple as that. So I just wanted to share this with you guys today, that we don't want to miss out on divine moments, right? We don't want to miss out on divine moments. And we read what sin was this morning, earlier, right? We read what sin was. We don't want to be in that category, right? So just surrender it all to Jesus. Surrender it all to Jesus, and he will cleanse you and make you free. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your message to us of divine moments, Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you help us to not be distracted in the everyday things of life. And also that we don't fall in the, in, the, in the wickedness of this world. But let us stand for your truth and let us follow you regardless, Lord. It's not easy, so we ask for your strength. We ask that, uh, Lord, I ask that you bless everyone here today and that, um, that they build a stronger relationship with you, Lord. And you touch each person here today. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.